The U.S. men's national team has been involved in many different dual national battles as of late. Some are more important than others. However, one thing is for sure. All of them matter. Hi, if you're new here, I'm Filippo and welcome to Tactical Manager TV and welcome to another episode. And today we are going to go through nine key dual nationals that the U.S. men's national team needs to fight for within the next few months or years. Now, you may be asking yourself, why nine? Why not 10? Why not 11? Why not five? Well, don't overthink it, right? The only reason I did that was I got two dices, I tossed them, and I looked at the numbers. I got a five and a four. Five plus four is nine. So I decided to do nine. There's many more dual nationals we need to fight for that are very talented. Comment down below any of them that I might have missed throughout this video, and we'll gladly do a video on them later in the future. But, you know, I, I had to go with the dices because I am very superstitious and extremely professional. Pure professionalism right there. All right. With that said, everyone, don't forget to check out the Tactical Yanks podcast. My humble side right here, the best U.S. soccer podcast out there. And here's a short clip of it. What happened, the complaint was that they're playing so many games in Ohio the past 12 months or so. That yes. was the main complaint. Not, not, we're not looking into the 1930s, 1950s, 1990s, even early 2000s. We're talking about now. In the past 12 months, they could have maybe played in different states. Okay, now that I just gave myself a pat on the back and promoted my own podcast with Pete from 11 Yanks, don't forget to hit that like button right now for this video and subscribe if you enjoy this type of content and much more. We'll be covering the U.S. Men's National Team throughout Nations League, World Cup, and much more. Thank you very much. Let's play the intro and let's start with the dual nationals. The first dual national I want to talk about is Jonathan Gomez from Real Sociedad B. And look, many of the dual nationals in this video, some of them are very well known, some of them are not so much. So Jonathan Gomez is one that you have most certainly heard of by now. The left back position is a position that the U.S. men's national team very much lacks depth. A-Rob was able to secure the spot, and despite being reliable, there seems to be a major drop-off on the backup of that position, unless we consider playing Dest or Scali out of position at the left-back, even though there will still be a drop-off as A-Rob is a natural left-back. George Bello has had ups and downs and will likely be in Bundesliga 2 next season. Sam Vines has never really impressed. After all, it's always someone out of position that has to come in and fulfill that. Sometimes it was Dest. Not just that, Jonathan Gomez is a different style when compared to Anthony Robinson. He relies less on athletic ability and more on his technique. I do also have to say that losing Jonathan Gomez would strengthen our rivals Mexico. So that is something else to consider. When you're trying to battle for dual national against Mexico, you have to think about that. If we lose that player, not only we lose a talented player for ourselves, we're giving Mexico a talented player for them. Now, I have done my job in recruiting Jonathan Gomez. We had an interview here with him at the channel. And I used my very aggressive recruiting tactics to get him to the U.S. men's national team. Here's the clip. We look forward to hopefully having you. I'm not going to lie with the U.S. men's national team. I'm not cheering for you to pick L3. I, I really, honestly, I think it would be a terrible decision if you pick L3, if you ask me. Okay. Now, Jonathan Gomez is playing for Real Sociedad B in La Liga 2. Which again, La Liga 2 is a lesser league than MLS, but in La Liga 2 is also one of the players that Greg Berhalter played and has been reliable in Greg's eyes, which is Shaq Moore. He plays in La Liga 2. Also, Jonathan Gomez had a very successful season with Lou City in USL last year when he was still 17. Now, Jonathan Gomez is most certainly a dual national we need to get. I have high hopes for the kid along with being a position that we very much need. Now, for Jonathan Gomez, there's one more thing that we do need to point out. He was with the U.S. men's national team senior squad in December, and now he's playing a friendly with Mexico senior squad against Guatemala in April of 2022. So 2021, he was with the U.S. senior squad, 2022 with Mexico senior squad. So it seems like it's a 50-50 right now, right? We don't know what he's going to choose. He's going to both camps to get a feel of what he prefers, what he wants. It seems like it's 50-50. That's just something to point out, okay? By the time you're watching this, he probably already played a friendly 
with the senior squad of the US and with Mexico against Guatemala. The next player here is Gaga Slonina. He's American and Polish as well. So we'll talk about him. He's also a very well-known name that you guys know by now. The U.S. men's national team has plenty of goalkeeping options over the long term. Zach Steffen, Matt Turner, Ethan Horvath are all fairly young for the goalkeeper position. As a goalkeeper tends to break out later in their careers, many past the age of 25. Now look, look at this to put it into perspective how young Gaga Slonina is. At the 2030 World Cup, Gaga Slonina will only be 26, which means he will have at least another 10 good years as long as he's healthy. That is in 2030. He does also have a Polish passport, and the Polish Federation has reached out to him. They are aware of him. The Polish national team coach himself visited Slonina in the United States and gave him a jersey. So they are very much in touch and in recruitment mode. I'm just choosing to believe that Gaga Slonina only met up with him to get a free jersey. Yes, he did get a free jersey right there. He also does have some serious interest from European clubs. I mean, a 17-year-old goalkeeper capable of playing at the highest level with grown men. I know MLS is not the top league, but it's still a professional league and probably a top 15 league in the world. It's pretty impressive to do so at age 17 as a goalkeeper. Gaga Slonina has been a locked in starter for Chicago Fire this season. MLS has been having a good season and that has to be said at age 17. That is quite impressive. He does have a lot to improve in his game, but he has a lot of time. Eight years from now, how much he can improve in positioning, awareness, and just by gaining experience as a goalkeeper. I think he should also stay in MLS much longer, gain more professional minutes before moving abroad. Don't go abroad and sit on the bench. It doesn't help. We've seen this with many of our goalkeepers, Stefan and Horvath. He's most certainly not a top three option for us right now, but he is our highest ceiling goalkeeper at the moment. I have heard he has the main interest of playing for the United States and not Poland, but only time will tell. That's just something I heard. He is a very important dual national that we must retain. The next name is a player that might not be as known in the U.S. men's national team community. And it's also a player that we likely won't get, but it's worth mentioning. And that's Alex Alcala that belongs to L.A. Galaxy. Technically, let me let's talk about it. Alex Alcala is a 16 year old Mexican American that plays for LA Galaxy's two squad, the reserve squad. He was born in California, but has Mexican family ties and a Mexican passport. The problem here is the kid only played for Mexico's youth national team, not for the United States. He was with their U15 and U16 with 10 games played with the U15s and he was never with the US men's national team youth system. Also, he did make his U15 debut for Mexico when he was only 12. Not just that, it's quite clear where his heart is, and it's with Mexico. The kid is a baller, a world-class potential, and I'm not exaggerating, the potential is there. During the GA Cup, we saw him toy around against Manchester United Academy defenders. Alex also spent time training in England with Manchester City and in Spain with Barcelona at the La Masia Academy. It's also important to point out that Manchester City does have a purchase option for Alex Alcala once he turns 18. So he might not be in MLS that long after all, or not even be in MLS ever. This season, he will be in USL. I say purchase option. However, it seems like the deal is set and he will likely end up at Manchester City once he's 18. Now, you can't cap tie him yet. It makes no sense to have him in the senior squad where he can have no impact. That would be a predatory cap tie, which I'm 100% against and so is Greg Berhalter. Also, to be fair, I believe there were reports that Alex has said many times he feels Mexican. So no matter what US soccer does, no matter what we do, they might just not be able to convince him. His mind might be made up. But until he is cap tied, US soccer should try as much as they can to get this extremely talented player. The next player is also someone you all should be very familiar with, and that is Richie Ledesma from PSV. He's a Mexican American talent that was born in Phoenix, but also has Mexican ties through his family and obviously has a Mexican passport. Now, Richie currently plays for PSV and did have a major setback last season when he tore his ACL. He has returned this season and struggled to get meaningful minutes for PSV, which makes sense as he's returning from an ACL injury and he also had some minor injuries to set him back even more throughout the season. There have been plenty of reports out there that Mexico is interested in bringing him in, but so far he has only played with the US men's national team U20s, U23s, and he also played a friendly with our senior squad under Greg Berhalter. So Ledesma could break out any time for PSV and prior to his ACL injury, it did seem like he was about to. So he's another talented player that we must get also to not help Mexico strengthen their squad with this young talent. Richie Ledesma is much more talented than people give him credit for. Highly technical player, creative, and we've seen this with PSV, and I think he'll break out through PSV anytime soon. 
maybe next season or the following season, two seasons from now. So we definitely don't want to strengthen Mexico right there. Next up is Tony Leone, another Mexican-American. Man, <laughs> a lot of talented Mexican-Americans here for us to fight Mexico for. Tony Leone is a very talented center back that currently belongs to LAFC, but plays in USL for the Las Vegas Lights. He's also just 17, a very technical center back, which nowadays I can't emphasize enough how important it is to be a ball playing defender. Plus, at the U20 level, him and Justin Che are likely the highest ceiling center backs we have if you don't take into account Brian Oko, because Brian Oko, I think he's Switzerland's to lose. It's very unlikely that we'll get him. And again, he's Mexican-American, as I pointed out. So we would be strengthening Mexico if we lose him. Every dual national battle with Mexico or Canada has more weight to it because of the region. Leone also did play in USL last season at age 16 with 23 games, one goal, three assists as a center back for the Las Vegas Lights FC. So during the national team's youth career that he had, he flip-flopped between both national teams. He's played 10 games with the U.S. men's national team U15s. He also played three games with the U.S. men's national team U17s. But then he also played five games with Mexico's U15s and seven games with Mexico's U20s. And the U20s is what worries me that he played for Mexico. That is what worries me. And let me tell you why. One, because it's more recent. And two, I can't confirm this, but apparently in the Revelations Cup last year, he was invited by both camps, Mexico and the United States, and he picked Mexico for the U-20. So that's not a good look for us at all. Hopefully our federation stays in touch. You never know how good a 17-year-old can turn out to be one day. However, now let's talk about a center back that to me is the most important one we need to get. And that is Justin Che. Justin Che is currently at Hoffenheim on an 18 month loan with an option to buy. He's an extremely talented center back that often plays as a right back as well. That also had interest from Bayern, even was there for six months on a loan during 2021. Just one thing to keep in mind, he is a center back, but at a very young age, center backs can often be played as right backs as they develop. So that's why he played a lot as a right back for FC Dallas and MLS last year in 2021. Just think about it this way. Sergio Ramos was a right back at one point for many seasons. Bayern also played Chris Richard as a right back back in last season. The DFB, aka the German Federation, is highly interested in Justin Che to bring him into their youth national team. C Germany currently is worried about their center back position for the long term. Also, we did bring Justin Che here to the channel in 2021 to talk about if he was open to playing for the United States and Germany. And this is what he had to say about it. You do have a German passport too which it might have facilitated a little bit with the work permits in Europe, but you're not torn in between countries. Your goal is to be a USMNT player, if I'm not wrong, correct? Well, or do you or do you leave it open? Or do you leave that open? I would say I'd leave it open. Because leave it open. The more opportunities you have and, you know, the, the more chances you have is always the better. So yeah, Justin Che is probably the highest ceiling center back we have at the U20 level. We most certainly need to battle him out, especially because if Germany is interested, we got to act quick, okay? Justin Che is definitely a dual national. We cannot lose. Next up is Bora Adin Link from Fenerbahce, Turkish American. Bora is a 16 year old born in Miami that has a Turkish passport and an American passport, obviously, because he was born in Miami. And in a recent interview at Transfermark, he said, I was born in Miami, but I never lived there. I used to live in Dubai at a young age because my parents worked over there, but never really in the US. When we left Dubai, we moved to Istanbul in Turkey, and we've been there since. For the same interview in Transfermark, which the link is on the description, he also talked about the possibility of playing for Turkey or the United States. Bora said, I haven't made any commitment to either country. I want to commit to a national team that helps me develop and makes me better on and off the field. So I still haven't decided. The US national team has been in contact, though, and we have talked. Let's see what the future holds. So based off those comments, it seems like he's going to go based off what it's better for his career rather than emotional attachment, which to me is good news because emotionally he's definitely more attached to Turkey. He does play as a winger, attacking midfielder, and even as a center forward. He brings a great mix of athleticism and technique from the many reports we got. He's also seen as one of the top prospects in Turkey and currently plays for Fenerbahce, which he also stated that it is his childhood club. 
In terms of his youth national team career, he has only played for Turkey, but the US soccer has been in touch and most certainly must fight for this young, talented 16-year-old. So as I said, he grew up in Turkey, his childhood team is Fenerbahce and played for the Turkish youth national team, so emotionally he's more attached to Turkey, but it, he made it seem like it would be a career decision. So our odds are good. Next up is Malik Tillman, the 19 year old from Bayern Munich. Malik Tillman, and I mean, there's also Tim Tillman, his brother from Firth, a great player worth mentioning. But in this video, I want to focus on Malik Tillman as Greg Berhalter himself has been in touch with him. Tillman was born in Germany, but has an American passport through his father, a very talented forward slash attacking midfielder that currently plays for Bayern. As he did not seem much like a Bayern player when he got minutes for the team this season, in my personal opinion, he did seem like he's a Bundesliga quality player just at age 19, so major potential. I just don't think he is Bayern level or potential for the long term. He has been with the United States U15s program, and since then, he has always been with Germany's youth program from the U15 level all the way to the U21s. It comes down mostly to is he good enough for Germany? If he is, I think that's the probable option that he'll pick. If not, he will pick the United States. But then, obviously, it also depends. Is he going to also be good enough for the United States? Of course, like we need to talk about that too. We're not a team that just takes any player at this point. But he is a 19 year old talented player. I mean, the German youth national team. So you can clearly see that he's talented. Plus, he's in the Bayern roster. How good will he be? Only time will tell. But Greg Berhalter is in touch and should try to get him as he currently is sooner rather than later. Because as I said, if he becomes too good, Germany will likely be his choice. In my humble opinion, or guess, right? Because I, I, I haven't talked to Tillman. Maybe he does want to play for the United States, just as the United States never called him. But I think if he's good enough to play for Germany, that will likely be his choice. Last but not least, and it's a player that people kind of forgot about him and that is Kick Peary, the Dutch American and we shouldn't forget about him. Kick Peary is a 21 year old Dutch American center back that belongs to Ajax and is on a loan with 20 in the Eredivisie. We had him here at the channel in 2021 where he left the possibility of playing for Netherlands and the United States open. Here's the clip. Do you have a national team in mind? Would you consider picking the US? Um, do you have anything decided? Are you still open-minded? What, what's going on through your head in regards to that? Because there's two options there. Well, to be honest, I'm very open-minded about this subject because, well, I'm young. Um, I was born in America, but after uh, one month, I uh, traveled to the Netherlands with my family. All my family is Dutch. So yeah, I played my uh, games for the national youth teams. But still, America is a very nice country, very nice mentality. So, yeah, I can't say much about that because I haven't decided yet. So, again, we'll see what the future brings. And they're both great countries. And, yeah, I think time will tell. Kick Puri is a very technical lefty center back that is very capable at age 20 and 21 to play in the Eredivisie, the Dutch league, which is a very highly competitive league. Maybe not for Ajax, but for other high quality teams like Hedevin and even Twenty, like we saw last season. We don't have many lefty ball playing defenders coming up, kind of like John Brooks is, so Kick can most certainly be a fantastic option. He has also not played much this season due to a back injury that he's been dealing with all season long. He's slowly returning and should be fully fit for the next season. In terms of youth national team, he played for the Netherlands U15s, 16s, 17s, 19s, and U20s. So he's essentially theirs to lose, even though he said he's open to both options. But with that said, we have gotten Serginho Dest from them in the past, and Kick will likely be coming down to a career decision as well, rather than emotional ties. Even though, if you think about Serginho Dest, he was with our youth national teams, unlike Kick Puri. So yeah, many forgot about him because this injury has kept him off the fields, but he's a very technical lefty ball playing defender that I would love to have as an option for the US men's national team. And as he returns, as he gets fit, He's a player we do have to stay in touch with. All right, everyone, that does it for this episode. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to smash that like button. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and check out the Tactical Yanks podcast. All right, that's all I had to say for this one. Don't forget to comment down below any dual nationals you want us to make videos about in the future. I want to thank you all very much for watching. Also, let me know, out of the dual nationals that I listed, which ones do you think we're going to get? Which ones do you think we're going to lose? Thank you very much for watching, everyone, and have a great day.